And if they lock in the Kagura and the Hayabusa as their last picks, it could still work. It's not a bad lineup. But if you look at PvE here, definitely all, not a lot can go wrong for them as long as they really do help out uh, their main carries here or their damage dealing options because U level's lineup can just mess that up with a lot of invades. Yeah, and speaking of the Kagura, I'm not a big fan of it too. Again, it's a very safe mage, but then again, landing your skills is key. Again, all of Kagura skills are skill shots. Yeah. If you don't land or at least preemptively place that umbrella in a good spot, that Yinyang overturn might not be as massive as you imagined it in your head. And mm -hmm. that requires a lot of skill. And if you're going up against a Lancelot who again is extremely mobile mm -hmm. and even has uh all that again, uh iframes mm -hmm. of uh, being invulnerable with the Thorn Gross and Phantom Execution, it's gonna be extra hard for the Kagura. But looks like we are entering the land of dawn already for match two of today of day one of MPL season seven main qualifiers this is a match with PVE on the blue side and limit breakers on the red side Renmar looks like the action begins at mid lane yep just as it always does they're gonna be clearing that up first and then they're gonna be going into their jungle so everyone's just gonna chill out a little bit but it seems like Kram and Tigasin kind of just want to fight it out right away here that Harith needs to put in the work be able to farm against that Yuzong and Cram just needs to find that perfect balance of okay I'm gonna mess up your farm and not give you opportunities but also I shouldn't be diving you way too close to your tower because that rotation coming in from the far side could just mess me up yeah and so far both teams are playing it quite on edge I would say and not too safe and not too aggressive as well but uh, Surib here a little bit uh, oh no it's in the bot lane though Renmar this might be dangerous for Cram Cram I just told you man you can't dive now Harith way too close to his tower and he goes down first kill goes to Aether main here and I just said it uh, you really need to be careful as that you song yes you do have the ability to escape but the forces they're nearby and they have good early game damage yeah and lack of respect for cram it gave first blood to pve a little bit of an overstep there in the mm. bottom lane and a little bit of respect are, is demanded right now for PVE and for that Yu Zhong, you already told me that he has to stay careful. And right now that he is zero one and zero without the flicker, he has to stay even extra careful in that bottom lane. Mm, has to stay down there, and it's gonna be a question of he'll be able to rotate to actually Turtle help out uh, limit breakers or U level here when they're gonna be going for the engage as Turtle spawns uh, in the top lane here, limit breakers have the lineup to potentially contest it but when you're going up against a uh, lancelot the damage output of the thorn grows as you mentioned he's already level four here and the farce has feathered airstrike limit breakers have to be really careful and that's gonna be a pick off onto top and immediately using the feathered airstrike but dns looks like could be going down here immediately two kills here for pv to start off the game but that's gonna be lapu lapu trading it out one for one in that engage and even though I said it that it looks bleak for LB, it seems like they might be able to secure the first turtle of the game here. Yeah, this is a 4v4 so far, but the stun does land and Sarib might be in trouble here. Four people still alive for LB and this oh. might just be another dot dead one. And Reptar looks like the turtle will reset for now, but PvE, they get it back. Now Aether main has control over the turtle pit here. They still have the retribution for LB, but they're not going to be able to go in the zone out by the feathered airstrike. Almost taken down Escanor, but Yuji's looking for him, but he doesn't go for it anymore as Dian is there to help him out. Uh, nice little back and forth there, but Aether Main takes the first turtle of the game. Uh, Aether Main right now, great turnaround for LB. I mean, Limit Breakers already had a good position in uh, that turtle. In PvE, Aether, they really went in, found the targets, found the correct way to just start that fight and end it immediately after mm -hmm. that first pickoff. They got the turtle as well. That's some kills and an objective. That's a total win for Avery. And Cram though losing here in the bottom lane, but he has YNG to help him out. That's gonna be three versus two if they fight it out here. But here comes the rest of Limit Breakers. They don't decide to go to the bottom lane. PVE decides to back off. So that's gonna be Kagura and V Silvana now just looking for positioning in the mid lane. Yeah, and so far both teams are taking it a little bit quiet, but looks like Nav here might be in trouble. Three people invested in the mid lane, four limit breakers, mm -hmm. but he immediately hides out. And this Jawhead 
I gotta commend him for his earlier play. Finding the Farsa yes. is one of the best things that you could do for your team. But looks like a team fight will happen here in the bottom lane, Renmar. I am waiting for a dive, but oh, they're not gonna give it to us. Patrick Verai, Esports here, Aether main, respecting that nav might actually get another pick off. No, he doesn't. Escanor able to find the safety of the turret here. So now. Aether Main is respecting the fact that it seems like uh, they understand the rotations here of you level that they can't stay too close to their own jungle because they just might get dived like this in the bottom lane. There goes the Zamon Force already popped off, but they're not going to be able to secure the kill. They commit ultimates to try and take down the Harith, but Harith takes in, gets away. Man, that Zaman Force came in clutch for that Harith. The exactly. moment he placed that, the slow, the dash, it was more than enough for him to survive that initial burst. And the moment that he survived that initial burst, that immediately gave Limit Breakers the signal to just stop that dive. But looks like a fight for the turn will happen. Yeah, let's go. Another one. Escanor disrupting, but it's not going to be enough to stop Aether Main from securing that turtle. Imperial Justice committed there, but they're not going to be getting a pickoff. It's still a relatively close game, but the first two main objectives of the game have gone to Aether Main. Yeah, and that gives them a 2k gold lead against Limit Breakers. Not that big of a gold lead yet. Mm -hmm. But again, a gold lead's a gold lead and might mean the difference here in the mid lane. Dockman might be in trouble. The damage is ticking on him, but looks like it won't finish him off. Yeah, and it's interesting that we're seeing a Savannah here actually rocking a tenacity he's like dogman is going for a little bit more of a safer and more sturdy sylvana build here because sometimes it is a little bit too risky for sylvana to dive in but speaking of dive sure be not gonna get dove dive dove in yes that's what i'm trying to say here <laughs> in the top lane okay. as patrick Virai esports break the first third of the game in the bottom yeah, and first third of the game going to David Virai Esports. Uh, Patrick Virai Esports, rather. <laughs> Who's David uh, Virai? I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, PBE already getting two turrets, actually. And that, gate, that gates out top lane and bottom lane here, but a 2v2 skirmish here in the top side. Reptar. Ooh, let's look. As sure B can survive this, but that's a sure kill from Escanor. That's going to be a stun, stopping the feathered airstrike, but way too late coming in from Dogman, able to secure a kill there onto the Hayabusa. But now here comes Aether. Main, going on the chase, going for more kills. There goes Imperial Justice zone out, but Dogman eats a face full of Thorned Rose. Not gonna lose a member of LB there except for the Hayabusa because now here comes Limit Breaker for the return. Here comes the counter punch as Cram goes in with the Dragon, but they don't full commit. I like the discipline that these two teams are showing. They're going for the kills when they have the abilities that they need, but if it's on cooldown, if the timing just doesn't look right, they immediately back off. Yeah, again, you you told me about discipline. Discipline is ve very important if you're looking at teams that want to win on the long run. And these teams, they don't look at the short-term effects of their actions. They want to make sure that when a big fight has to happen, they mm -hmm. have their skills. They have their, let's say, their battle spells. And it will, again, if they committed everything, they won't be prepared for this turtle fight. Oh, and Nav was not prepared for that dive in the drop, but that's going to be a counter punch here from the Feathered Airstrike of Yuji. They're going to be going in for the chase as they want control over that turtle pit. The members of Limit Breakers have been forced back. Dogman with the Spiral Strangling going in. The damage coming in from Tigasin is starting to hurt the front line of Limit Breakers. No one's going for the turtle just yet. Sure be with the shrub giving the information. It's still a fight for the turtle as the Hayabusa split, uh, split pushing in the top lane for U level. Aether main back off knowing that they can't give the Hayabusa so much room to split push they go for the buffs instead and no one's gonna be going for the turtle just yet Womi. yeah turtle's still alive for now but in the bottom lane Zaman Force is committed and Escanor is forced to dash away again they have to respect the Gazin at this point, but looks like the turtle will finally continue. The dance for the turtle, it continues now, Reptar. And that is, actually, I'm not sure if Yuji committed the feathered airstrike by accident in the mid lane to clear waves here, so that's going to be on cooldown. Zaman Force has a relatively quick cooldown at this point, so they have that in their toolbox. That ultimate coming in, the Black Dragon form is committed. Thorn Rose, he gets a lot, gets the turtle as well. And Oko and Digasin with the double kill. Hayabusa crap takes out the Lancelot, but that is definitely a sure win for Aether Main as they take down four and they secure a turtle.
LB Limit Breakers did not break their limits in that fight. Not only did they lose the turtle, but they also lost four people. And now they might lose this mid lane as well if they aren't careful. Zaman Force is already committed, and this is going to be the last of their outer turrets. Either main has been playing out of their minds for the last three minutes, and all the turtles have been falling to their hands. And this just means that either they look like that they, they look like they're very ready for this morning fight and aether main channeling that spirit as you mentioned Yomi, of the former champions of the mpl from season one Sherby going in gets that knockback but they're not going to be able to secure kills just yet ug gonna get caught out here by dogman imperial justice already committed the bird cannot get away that is a case burn right now ug really low he gets taken out by the lapu lapu that's one kill here for limit breakers they might find out now but Nav is just waiting. Sherby is nearby. Oko's coming in. Let's see if they're gonna commit. There goes the puncture. Thorn grows committed and a kill there for Nav. And Aether Main still have control of this game. Yeah, Aether Main still has control of this game. But then again, that it, I feel like they could have played that a little bit cleaner near that jungle area. Losing one member wasn't really necessary. And in the top Ooh. side, a solo kill there by Hayabusa. You never really want to be on the receiving end of a uh, shadow kill when you're alone. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Two Tigas in there in the top lane. Again, one on one. Lapu Lapu versus Shurby. There goes the knockout punch. He goes in for the bob and the weave, but no, uh, that was a one for one. Why do you guys need to go in? It's a five versus one now, and Shurby, this might be a sure kill for LB. He's trying to get away. Shadow kill onto him, but look at him trying to survive. The drop, the sustain is insane. It's a one for one trade. How did he get away with the kill? It's a 4v1, and looks like he also bought his teams a little bit of time to get uh, that Lord and now the Lord is secured wow. by PvE. The fight continues here in the top side of the map. Four people invested, four limit breakers, but looks like they won't be finding one for now as the Farsa commits that ultimate to zone out everyone and that's a free Lord and a kill in that 4v1 Ooh. in the bottom lane. Immortality popped away from Nav, but LB are happy enough with what they have. The shadow kill onto two, that's the Gassin and Orko. That's a lot of damage, but he uses the clones to get away someone clip that please immortalize that moment where we saw Sherby just handle a four versus one team fight and secure a kill but uh, we gotta move on from that moment uh with the rest of the game here how do you see this game moving on as we enter now the mid game uh Uomi? well we are entering mid game the lord is still alive we have a 3k gold lead for either main i feel like that Gold lead will still balloon considering that the Lord is still alive, depending on how they want to play around this. It looks like they will be investing four members here in the bottom side. Great oh. engage, Reptar. Shut down, coming in from Bakito. And another kill here for Aether Main as they take out YNG and the Yuzong as well. So that's Hayabusa and Yuzong out for the count. They are able to break that uh, another tower in the bottom lane, if I'm not mistaken. But the mid lane is what I'm looking at here for Aether Main. They're looking at the bottom lane, but they're just committing resources right now. So that LB is forced Ooh. to defend. And that's not a good defense as Escanor goes down. Dockman and Dian are trying to hold on. But the top lane is getting split pushed by Sherby. And the mid lane is sure to follow. And right now, I just have to say that Nav is just insane with those ejects. And now that the Farsa ult is committed, it zones out two people out of that mid lane. And now, mid lane is open. PvE has taken mid, has taken bot, and will be taking top as the base will be forced to be exposed for Limit Breakers. And that is a Zaman Force committed by Tigasin and all the damage coming out, forcing LP back. But Aether Main, realizing that they don't have a lot of minion wings are playing this carefully, but here comes a dive. Here comes the feathered air strike. That's a one for one trade. Good so far as Tigas in goes down. Crab going after Uncle, not able to secure a kill. Going for the life steal. He gets knocked up. That's a double kill on both sides. Dian and Yuji secure the double kills here, but that is a two for two. But I can say Aether Main still in the lead, as you mentioned it earlier. You level limit breakers with no turrets left. Yeah, and right now that the base is exposed for limit breakers, PVE. They only have to make one more correct play and they could possibly end this game and move on to game two. And for either, if they commit, I guess, two more mistakes or three more mistakes, they have a lot of budget now in terms of creating mistakes considering that 
there are literally no turrets for limit breakers. They have not been able to push even one outer turret for the side of Aether. And just, just, just goes to show that Aether main has been controlling the map and the minion waves very beautifully in this game. And that this is, again, Midnight was talking about this in his analysis earlier, the nature of the draft and the natures of the lineup. PvE's lineup scales really well at this point. They have the Harith, they have the Farsa. Lancelot kind of dips a bit, but the damage will still be there. Hayabusa is going to be entering in a difficult position. All he needs to do is wait for the entry and time it. And speaking of timing, there's a beautiful timing here by Dogman, but that it puts Limit Breakers right outside of their face and open for a wipeout from Aether Main. Immediately, one member goes down, three of them go back. Escanor on the run but Escanor is going back home to base to go for the respawn and a double kill is secured by Tigasin and YNG just trying to run Nav with the chase let's see if we'll be able to get away Shadow Clone the Shadow Kill but a killing spree back home we were looking at the wrong action here because Aether Main are on their way to securing game number one there goes Dion only one member remaining he's down no immortality no members left and game one goes to Aether Main a knockout punch for either main, but the fight isn't over yet. And one, again, this is the best of three. If ever Limit Breakers could just get that anime moment where they flash back all of 